welcome everybody welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for being part of this family god is doing great and mighty things he is in our midst he's working things out for your good in this message i'll share two practical ways you can unlearn some things yes you have to unlearn certain things that you have learned all your life and they are not saving you well i don't know how old you are but you are here watching this message it means that you are able to understand what i'm saying you are not a child and for you to be at that age and being part of this family where we do spiritual warfare you have gone through some things so this is what i'm going to share in this message because most of the time we carry and grow with things that are not saving us well certain habits i've been doing this i've been like this all my life and you don't see any need to change maybe sometimes it's because of not knowing how to go about it or not knowing you have the problem that is a problem in itself so as a child of god blood washed loved by jesus and i know you love the lord so much he has good plans for you he wants you to get better and better the light of the righteous shines bright and brighter till the end until jesus comes your light must be shining all the time even when it's dark you are surrounded by the light of god and that darkness is repelled in jesus name so god says unlearn and leave it behind this is the message today and learn whatever it is that you have learned all these years and it has become part of you it's part of your flesh god says and learn it now you and teach yourself maybe you've been following a certain pattern that was before you got born again but this stronghold is still following you god says and learn certain habits and learn anything that is not serving you well leave it behind because it remains in the past hallelujah it's not easy but you have to force yourself many times things don't go our way because of not trying to find a solution not being intentional about it as it came upon my life i will ask the lord to help me to unlearn it to leave it behind so that i can run very fast if elijah had baggage on him carrying a lot of things he was not going to outrun and reach the gate first so this is what god wants you to do and learn certain things that are keeping you heavy because where you are going you have to reach there very fast leave certain things and learn them because it has taken time for you to learn certain habits now is the time to unlearn them leave them behind and embrace the future where you are going is very bright let me read this bible verse to you philippians chapter 3 verse 12 i don't mean to say that i have achieved these things or that i have already reached perfection but i press on to possess that perfection for which christ jesus first possessed me hallelujah jesus has possessed you and now you strive to reach that perfection you are not perfect yet but as you move as you follow jesus as you walk with him he's perfecting you he alone is perfect and you can find your perfection in christ alone because once you leave the past once you get rid of all that which is not saving you well so that the enemy doesn't take advantage of your ignorance god brightens your future the plans that he has for you are now fulfilled very fast this is what paul is saying he says i don't mean to say i've arrived no one has arrived none of us the only perfect one is jesus christ and we strive every single day to be like him to be closer to god and he alone is teaching us how we should live in this life as we are part of this family you know that i talk about spiritual warfare and there are some families that are still holding on to certain traditions and um, this can be very dangerous because as a child of god you don't want to participate in certain traditions that you know are against the bible those are kind of things that you have to unlearn you have to separate yourself from things like that even if everyone else is participating all those sacrifices that are being done in families there are places where once a year 
the whole family has to gather in the village or in this countryside and they slaughter a cow and they have to drink the blood, eat the food after they've sacrificed it to the gods. These gods are the gods of the family. And then you are part of that. What it means there is that you are one of them. You are also part of sacrificing to other gods. And that is bowing before other gods, before all these dead gods. And you don't want God to be angry with you. He's a jealous God. He cannot share glory with any other God. So you are now bowing to Jehovah. The only true living God, you cannot continue to participate in these traditions. Sometimes it's difficult unless you are far from them where you can give an excuse and say, oh, I'm not coming this time. But what if you are part of them? This is where it becomes very tricky. And there was a story of this one Indian guy. He said that he had a problem because in his family, they worship other gods. They give food to these unknown gods. They will even put water and just put food under an image and that is their god. These gods are even in homes. You find them in shops and it's very common to a point where you start to think it's normal. So for him when he became born again that became a problem and they invited him at one time as usual come we celebrate I don't know what it was, but there was some kind of sacrificing to these gods. Sometimes these gods are for prosperity, protection. I remember very well when I was young in my village, you have these kind of things and they do the incisions or oh, the family at night, you are gathered and they start cutting your skin, they put some herbs and you don't know what else they put there. I didn't see anyone enchanting or saying anything, but just that cutting and the blood coming out is a problem in itself. Why should we cut ourselves and blood should be coming out? Who wants that blood? Who wants to see blood? Satan, right? So was there any protection? No, there was no protection. We were getting sick like everybody else. And people were having nightmares as normal. Nothing changed. Everyone now was just even like in chains because that village now was surrounded by this protection of demons. We didn't know any better. But if you are here and such things are happening, you cannot participate. I know that you cannot be part of that because cutting yourself, of course, you know it's wrong. But there are things that come in a very subtle way where you are invited like this Indian man and uh, he is invited to be part of that ceremony. It was difficult for him to say no because sometimes you don't even know how to do it. But he prayed and one week to the time he entered into prayer and fasting. God is not dead. God is alive. He's very real. This God cannot be stopped by any evil. The brother fasted, I don't know for how long. He fasted for God to help him. He didn't know what to do because you know in families like that, these kind of ceremonies are done every year and everyone must be there, including children. So it's something very serious. I'm sure he was scared because I've heard stories where People who abandon such ceremonies are even stoned to death. And I don't know what was going on in the mind of the brother, but he embarked on this fasting and he asked God to help him. Because you are obedient to his word, he comes through. And this story is similar to what happened in the life of Elijah. The brother was surrounded with family members who were against his new life, his new life in Christ. And sometimes even spiritually, these idols can even come against you, can even start fighting you. But God was on his side. He fasted, asking God for help. He wanted God to intervene because he didn't know how to say no, what to even do. And God showed up. Hallelujah. God will show up in your life. Call upon his name. He is true and he's alive. As long as you want to obey his voice, obey his promises, God will show up. And that's what he did in the life of this brother. After praying and fasting that week, all the family members and the leaders of the family concerning this ceremony, they were also busy preparing. 
they don't just arrive on that day without doing their background work. They enchant, they call on these gods they are going to worship, and these gods are different gods for prosperity, for health, and they were praying that on that day, rain was not supposed to come. That was their prayer. They were praying to this God who is in charge of rain, not to bring rain on that day, and this is what happens. So. God of Elijah, God of this brother, your God, appeared. On that day, it rained so much that no one was able to stay where the ceremony was supposed to take place. Everyone scattered. I'm sure it was the first time to see something like that. Maybe they thought that they angered this God who is in charge of rain. I don't know what was going on in their minds. The brother didn't explain further. So this is evident that God cannot be stopped. God is here to help you. Every time something similar happens, you have to ask God for wisdom because he knows how he can go about it. Don't use your own wisdom, your own strength. This is a story that happened in the life of our brother. When you believe in God who is the living Jehovah, oh, miracles happen and this brother didn't even have to say a word to them god dealt with them they didn't even know what was happening he didn't even say i'm not going to be there i won't participate in the things you are doing now and uh, all that he didn't have to say a word this is a lesson that when you are faced with a challenge there are times that you don't even talk to people you don't even back yourself you don't defend yourself you can just go in the secret place and things begin to happen god scatters your enemies and i'm sure that year this gathering didn't happen which gave the brother enough time to breathe and by the time it's next year a lot of things have happened so your god is alive he's on the throne I want to give you two practical ways you can unlearn and leave things behind that are not advancing your life. Number one is to look at the lifestyle of those who claim to be Christians, praying and fasting, and still nothing is happening. You discover that if you look closely, you will find things that are stopping them. I've been sharing this even in the previous video. I mentioned habits that keep you stuck. You can be stuck for a long time because of certain habits. And this is why I'm still talking about unlearning certain things. So look at someone who is not praying the way you do. Look at the people who are calling themselves born again, blood washed, and maybe they are lukewarm and maybe they are not obedient to the word of God and things are falling apart. They are not taking action. They are not obedient to the promises of God. And you look at them, study them. It's because of not taking action or being obedient to the word of God. That's why they are in that situation. And you try and avoid that. You don't do the same because you can see the physical manifestation of what they are doing, the kind of lifestyle they are living. And that will help you not go in the same path because you have seen it happen against someone. You are not going to do the same unless you are not okay. And practical way number two is to do the opposite of what I've said. So you look at those who are advancing, who are out of stagnation, who God is answering their prayers, and why is God answering them and not others? Sometimes those who are not receiving answers, it's not always because of sin. Sometimes it's a season, but that season must move. There are seasons, there's summer, and summer ends and it goes to another season. So seasons don't last forever. This you should know. So there's no excuse to say, I'm in this, I'm stuck because it's a season. There's no season that is permanent. Seasons must change. Look at the lives of those who are moving forward. Those who are receiving answers from God. What can you learn from them? What is it that they are doing that is causing them to receive those answers? then you embrace that. You do more of that. You emulate. We emulate Jesus. We follow Jesus, but we can also follow those who love God genuinely and we see the fruit. We see their lives moving forward because of calling upon the name of the Lord, because of being obedient, because of doing certain things that are advancing their lives. So these are two practical ways 
that can really help you if you want to unlearn and leave behind what is not advancing your life. I know that knowledge is power and I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for being part of this family and what you're doing. God sees all that. May the name of the Lord be blessed and you and your families be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. If you haven't subscribed yet, take time to do so because you are being part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch other videos that I recommend at the end of this video. Continue commenting, share your testimonies. Someone is getting out of that situation because you shared that testimony. Thank you so much once again for watching. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.